This episode of the Red Bull Rant is brought to you by the fine patrons that support us through patreon.com slash Red Bull Rant. You can support us for the low, low price of $1 a month, and you can get exclusive content, including a monthly wrap-up for the New York Red Bulls. We want to send a special shout-out to our patrons who support us at $5 a month. That is our producer-level reward. Thank you to Jeremiah Dempster, Clayton John, Chris Adamek, Maeve Dartinez, and Pierre Delecto. Now, on to the show. This is the Red Bull Ramp Podcast. If you aren't expecting adult language, why even bother listening? Welcome, my friends, to the show of Rens. This is the Red Bull Ramp Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Iapico. I'm Truman, and this is episode 407. Yeah, the So-So Road. I don't even know if you can call it So-So at this point. Meh. Meh. You win some, you lose some. And apparently you lose some by a lot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so two games to talk about. First, uh... Away to Austin in MLS play with a 4-3 victory. Following that up with a away match at Orlando in the United States Open Cup semifinals and an embarrassing 5-1 loss. Which is very disappointing because they would have been hosting if they won. Yep. They would have been hosting that final. Yep. All right, before we get into our thoughts, uh, Truman, do you have the tweets or do you need me to read them out? No, one tweet from the Austin win from Steven Santos. He said, we won. I give up. We looked better than we did in front of a sold out home crowd last weekend with a second team or B team this week. Yeah, it was kind of a B plus team, I would say. B plus, yeah. Yeah. Not, not an A minus, but a B plus. Yeah. So, all right. So talking about last night, our friend Pierre Delecto said, it's frustrating at this point because Sunday gave me enough to feel confused about how this team operates. And then came Orlando and it was back to the mess already seen when they have to put up or shut up. Others have kind of noted it, but although Klamala is in the shits, he was at least playing well in the time compared to Cincy. Schubert at this point takes him out at probably when he shouldn't and tries to increasingly less effective Barlow smash and grab tactic, then throw everyone forward for all the desperate shots. And then, of course, well, we, I mean, we know that story. It's whenever, any time they're behind, that's just what they do. Steven Santos, back again, said, let's face facts. This franchise will never win the big game, whether it's MLS Cup, U.S. Open Cup, or CONCACAF Champions League. We just can't get a final win or even to a final because we just get stuck in that so metro way always. Uh, our friend Anthony said, I so wanted KC barbecue. You weren't going to get it, buddy, because we would have been home. <laughs> And then uh, Justin says this, says, first half was lights out, should have left Klamala in. Struber decided to throw the kitchen sink too early. So there you go. All right. I don't even know how you want to approach this. Should we talk about two different games or or just – I feel like we got to talk about these things differently. Yeah, they, I mean, they are, they're two completely different games. And, and, and – but- one one is Elpha Cup, one's MLS, right? Right, so, and, and I, I think one had an effect on the other as well. So Yeah. All right, well, why don't we start with the loss then? So we'll we'll do likes and dislikes for both games. Okay. How's that? We'll do a, a, I think we're going to spend a lot of time on recaps, so might as well supersize a little bit. All right, so likes, dislikes for Austin. What did you dislike the most about that match? I mean, sir, they, they get that 2 nothing lead, Surge goes out, and then the game kind of changed. Uh, then that's when Austin put all the pressure on the Red Bulls and it became a hold on till the very end of the first half. And then thankfully the Red Bulls scored two more and then they got one back and it was again a hold on, you know, they, they scored two. So there was a lot of nervous moments at the end of the both halves, um, which honestly, Carlos Coronel making an amazing save definitely helped preserve the win, but that's what it was. It was a lot of desperate dis- Defending, it was Aaron Long coming out. I think they brought him out because I think maybe they thought they were just going to win that game. 
um, and save him. But th- I think that was a questionable decision, and it was just one of those pray you get a result, a good result, and thankfully they did. Um, I think my dislike is going to be not necessarily the lineup itself, but some of the changes, right? So you're resting guys for Open Cup, which I can understand. But then why start Aaron Long? If you plan to, I'm assuming that was a planned substitution 45 minutes in. Mm-hmm. Regardless, regardless of the scoreline, I think that was a planned substitution. You would think so. Which to me means why even bother starting him? Right? Uh, Tom Edwards wasn't available for for Wednesday's game, so run him for 90 minutes, that's fine. The Nealis brothers, uh, whatever, but I mean, Aaron Long is your best defender and you have I think arguably, at least in Struber's eyes, a more important match against Orlando City and you still run him out for 45 minutes? I mean, I know he brought the keenness in towards the end of the game, but I think it was only for like 15, 20 minutes. Right? So you can think that's kind of more of like a warm-up than anything else. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just baffling. Um, some of these roster decisions he's made in terms of starting lineup and substitutions. And I mean, we talked about it after the New York City game, right? You have, not that he's been great, but you have Patrick Kamala, who's supposed to be your best forward because he's a designated player, and he's right on the bench. It's not even the second, or sorry, the first or second option off the bench as a forward. And then you go to this game, Aaron Long starts, he plays 45 minutes, comes out. Um, it, it was just, I don't know. And, and I know part of this game is dictated by Serge getting hurt. But I don't know. I, I It's just the last few weeks have been kind of like, what the hell are we doing here in terms of our formation and our, our squad every week? I know we're not deep, right? The Rebels have never been, the Rebels have never been a deep team. And part of that problem is just MLS's roster rules. But I mean, come on, this, this, this is not his first coaching gig, right? He yeah. should, he yeah. should know how to handle cup matches midweek. This, this is not a new territory for him. Uh, likes for the game. I'm going to go with Serge because those, that was a great 20 minutes from him. Yeah. And uh, whenever he's back, and hopefully it's relatively quick because hamstrings can be kind of tricky, uh, whenever he's back, I think he deserves to start. I'm, I'm not saying it regularly. I think he deserves a few chances to see if he can be that guy at the top of the formation because to me it looked like he did a better job of playing that forward than uh, Kamala or Bartlett does. Because that's how I see it. Yeah, I mean, in the, in the little time he's had, he's he's played great, you know? And he scored two goals already. So, yeah, why not? Why not give him a shot to start a game yeah. um, when he's feeling better? Uh, my, I mean, my like, obviously, it's four goals on the road uh, in Austin, which is huge. Tough place to play. The teams they've been playing great. As of late, I mean, they're the they're in second place in the West. And I think the biggest goal is the third one. You know, coming out of the second half, you give up that first goal, you're tied. And that third goal is absolutely huge because then it caused Austin to press a little bit more. And then you got the counterattack with the man that I never th- ever thought would score again, Tom Barlow. That was just completely shocking. As I told Frennan sitting next to me when he got subbed in, uh, by the way, this guy sucks. He can't hit the broad side of the bar. And about two minutes later, he scored a goal. So he, he must have heard you. Yeah, I mean, that uh, huge points on the road and especially coming off that and fucking terrible home loss, the NYCFC, uh, that that's a big result. We're no one, none of us expected it to happen. Yeah. I mean, on this show, we all predicted losses. So, yep. All right. Let's talk about the Orlando match. Um uh, yeah, so the Open Cup semifinal 5-1 loss. Uh, dislikes. I'll go first on this one because I really want to open up with this soundbite. Fucking embarrassing! Wait, hold on. It's fucking embarrassing! It's, Man, it's a volume now. fucking embarrassing! It's fucking embarrassing! It's fucking embarrassing! 
five like, times for each of the five <laughs> fucking goals we gave up. After two of them, you know, like, I was like, you know, fuck it, we're going five here. <laughs> Those five goals were all horrible. Two of them are set pieces where we can't clear the ball. Uh, the fourth one was, and, and I have a problem with the referee that that specific goal, but the, comp- the complete give up by the back line, everybody just completely stops waiting for a whistle. Uh, the fifth goal, I guess whatever, at that point it's, we were chasing the game. And the, the second goal, just to give up that, that goal that quickly after halftime, I mean, you literally scored in the like the first minute of stoppage time in the first half, and then what was it like four or five game minutes later, you give up two fucking goals. I know halftime second clean between, but that's again. It's fucking embarrassing. This is supposed to be one of the best defensive teams in the league. On paper, we should have crushed Orlando. Mm-hmm. But I, and, credit to, and credit to Orlando. They played great. They, they, whatever game plan they had, they executed it perfectly, right? Yeah. It's, it's the same thing. When we played New York City, New York City played great, and we played shitty, and it showed. In this game, Orlando played great, we played sit, shitty, and it showed. The only difference is that Orlando put their fucking boot to our throats compared to New York City. Yeah. I, I mean, my biggest dislike, honestly, is just the what you saw was a lack of depth uh, on this team, quality depth, because you're playing two games on the road in places that are absolutely hot as hell. I mean, you grind out a win in, in Austin. I mean, grind it out, sweat it out at the end. And then uh, you're playing three days later in freaking Orlando, Florida, <laughs> you know, in, in, in terrible weather, just just absolutely crap. And you don't have enough guys to really hold on, hold in for for, you know, another fucking 45 minutes in a game. You could just tell that they were completely gassed in the second half and just had had nothing going on. And then you don't have the quality subs and it's just sitting back and, and watching a second half beat down. Yeah. I, I got to find, I got to find the, um, the tweet that I saw last night from, I think it was Ben Cork. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Let me get his Twitter page up. Uh, so let's see. Where's the, the, the red? Uh, so it was during the press conference after the game. Um, so when Gerhard Struber was asked about Lewis Morgan, and I'm going to read his quote at this point, uh, or quote his tweet, uh, Struber paused for several seconds before saying that while Morgan had, quote, big talent, but that he is incredibly unhappy with his defensive performance in the Red Bulls loss to Orlando quote, players must leave everything on the field. The guy who scored the fucking goal is the one you're taking off because you want to punish him. Right. I mean, seriously, what the fuck? Tell us how you really feel. Okay. You're a shit manager. (laughs) I mean, in the middle of a, Fucking semifinal is not the time to punish players for a perceived lack of will. Yeah. Morgan, to me, was actually one of the hardest, was one of the players I was trying the hardest. There were multiple times I saw Kamala not press forward when everybody else was. And that's been a problem with him since the beginning of the year. Kamala doesn't press with everybody else. I'm not saying it's just one part of his game. But Morgan was also playing out of position he should have been that line right behind Kamala but he was back playing winner because Tom Edwards decided at the end of the New York City open cooking to punch somebody and get himself suspended for a game right the defense as a whole sucked especially on those those set pieces 
I mean, if you're going to punish anybody, Lewis Morgan is not high on the list of people that deserve to be punished for that game. Right. And it just it baffles me that after a year and a half of him completely running the team, right? So Morgan, in theory, is one of his guys because he was brought in this year. Um, if you don't trust him, one, don't start him. But two, fucking do something. You're the manager. You're the guy that's put there to make the players do their fucking jobs. So maybe at halftime is when you'd say to Morgan, listen, you need to start pressing better. You need to get higher up the pitch and, and put more pressure on Orlando. Don't. And apparently he gave like a doom and gloom halftime kind of speech. I mean, he came out, at, I'm pretty sure it was the interview right before the second half started. He was basically saying, oh, I don't think he played that well. Well, then fucking instruct the team to play better. Right? That's your job, right? If things aren't working, you make adjustments so the team can perform. And clearly, he did not do that last night. And the, the players have a big role in it, too, because the players absolutely shit the bed. But part of that is that he, as the manager, has to take responsibility for the players not doing the things that he wants them to do. Right. It's his team. In you, the can't, end. you can't go out at the end of the game, at the press conference, basically blast the player for not trying – and I'm a, and it, to me, it didn't seem like Morgan was performing any differently in the first versus second half. So unless you at halftime specifically told him to do something and he didn't do it, which I don't think that was the case from what I've seen online. Why are you punishing the guy who actually scored? Who actually did something to help this team? Because clearly the back line didn't do it. I mean... It, it sucks. It last night was a complete systematic failure in my eyes, and I'm not. T- I know some people are trying to blame the global or not global, but the the whole organization in terms of recruiting players and all that stuff. No, last night is strictly about the guys on the field and Schubert and how none of them did their jobs, or at least well enough to the point to contain Orlando. A mediocre Orlando. Yeah. I mean, they didn't look... Orlando, Orlando did not look great last night. Yeah. It's not like they came out, you know, and completely dominated us. They only dominated us when we started having to push for the... push for a second goal. Right. Yep. All right. I don't, I don't know if you did just, like, honestly, I, I kind of just... That's okay. I got mine in. I got my big like, though. Okay. Big well, like. Go ahead. Go for your like. I was at AW last night, so it was awesome. It was a great night. I had a great time. I had a great time. While you guys were sitting there suffering through a, a god-awful loss, uh, I got to watch over four hours of professional wrestling. You know, one, two, three. Yeah, over four hours of professional wrestling. So, I had a great night. And then Mets beat the Yankees and, and swept the two-game series. So, wonderful evening. I have no complaints. Uh, it's true. I did give you the warning not to watch the game. So yeah, I didn't. I didn't actually have to sit through that game live. So that was good. <laughs> yeah. So so we we rarely evoke the do not watch this game uh, card or button. We want to call it. Last night was definitely one of those ones that deserved it. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, after thoughts. Um, I think we got it all in there. I well, think we got. I got. I got to come back to the referee in a little bit. Oh God. Okay, so here's the thing, right? So there's no VAR after um, in the Open Cup, right? There's no VAR. We all know this. It, for the fourth goal, the assistant referee raises his flags because he's a, he's a player offside. Apparently, I can't remember the, ref, the center ref's name, but apparently he waved it off. But Every single player, both Red Bulls and Orlando, kind of stopped because the assistant referee kept his flag up. Without VAR, at that point, the referee should be blowing his whistle Mm -hmm. because both teams have now reacted to the assistant referee. Right? It's not like you can say, "Oh, only only the Red Bulls had stopped, or only Orlando had stopped." 
No, both teams have been affected. So at that point, the whole game is now affected by a flag. So worst case, you just blow a whistle, declare a drop ball, and continue. Right? I understand why he didn't blow a whistle if he thinks there was no offsides. Apparently, one of the Orlando players touched the ball, which would have cleared the offsides. But however that worked out, once everybody stops, right, the game as a whole is now affected. And the Red Bull should have been paying fucking attention because there's there's a guy running down the flank on the on the other side of the field that just got in for an easy goal. Mm-hmm. But to me, it's just if you are going to you, you have to blow the whistle. And then the worst part is if you don't blow the whistle, fine. But they don't have a fucking conversation for a minute after the goal, right? There, like I said, there's no VAR. Right. So you're not reviewing anything. Yeah. So it's either you make the call live or you don't. Like it's not like a penalty where I could argue where you can argue. All right, he didn't have a good point of view. Let me talk to the assistant and, and see how that looks. It was, oh, I'm going to wave you off, but then I'm going to come revisit the conversation or the the call afterwards. Mm-hmm. One, they have fucking headphones, so that could have easily been a quick, is he off or not? It, it, like to me, at least that's. But if you're going to not call the offsides, and I and I, there's no video that's this as far as I know that's proof that the offside was or wasn't legit. You can't let the fact that both teams get affected let the play continue. That that's where I'm at. Right. I don't know if the call is right or wrong, but my point is once both teams stop, you have to kind of reset. If that's only right. Well, just bring in VAR next year. There you go. Problem solved. <sighs> well, the, the problem is the, the lower leagues can't do VAR, so. Well, that's their problem, not mine. <clears throat> well, it's fine up, up until we play at one of their stadiums. So just like some guy with a handheld camera just runs back and forth the whole game. What's the problem? I don't understand. <laughs> he just runs next to the uh, the assistant referee. Easy. I don't know. I something's got to be done next year with with the Open Cup. And I'm not saying um, I, I think we need VAR in general. I just give the referees that that helping hand. But I don't know. Maybe U.S. Soccer, you just fund like. Do we need permanent infrastructure for VAR? Like, can it just be a traveling setup that just goes to that you can bring to stadiums? Or you just say once it yeah. goes to the quarterfinals, it's in, it's in use. Yeah. That, or hey, not yeah. even the quarterfinals. Round of 16. At that point, you have enough MLS sides right. in, right, at that point. And maybe, God forbid, like... Um, you have one Sacramento Republic that you can figure or it out. At, at one, or state. one Union Omaha, right? Again, right. yeah, like we said, we just figured it out. Like, at that point, you already have ESPN or next year... I can't remember if it's Apple or TV, Apple TV or somebody else next year because it's not ESPN, I think. Uh, but whoever's going to get next year, presumably once you get to that that kind of stage, they're going to have enough cameras there to cover most of what you need for VAR. Right. And you just do a, a a quick setup, or worst case, you just have all the feeds going back to a central office. Maybe borrow MLS's office for the night. I mean, generally MLS doesn't play on Open Cup nights, so right. borrow borrow their Situation room in Atlanta. Let's go that way. All right. Anything else about these games? No. Let's let's uh let's, get, let's move on from this nonsense. <laughs> okay. All right. So prediction standings. Nobody got anything right. So nothing changed. Uh, Truman's in first with sixteen. I am in second with fourteen. Pat's in third with five. Uh, coming up this weekend, Red Bulls are playing, but not. In MLS, we are playing FC Barcelona. Uh, that game is Saturday, July 30th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so apparently it will be on an MSG if you're in the area. Or if you're like Truman and I on Red Bull TV. All right. 
Yep. <laughs> I just cool because I was I was curious. Apparently, I just found it today. Apparently, it's uh, Red Bull TV. So okay, download that app. <laughs> I think I can download it on Roku at least. Um, and, I, and install. There we go. Done. Well, there you go. Um, so yeah, if you're not in the area, Red Bull TV is what you got to use. Um, I understand why we signed up for a friendly as a cash grab. I feel like if we had one Orlando, it wouldn't matter. Mm-hmm. But now I feel like it's just going to be a gut punch when we get destroyed by Barcelona. Who cares? Everyone sold their tickets. It's going to be a bunch of Barca fans anyway. True. And hopefully we just play a Red Bull Tube C squad. Oh, yeah, because Red Bull Tube has been fucking perfect this year. Yeah, why not? Throw them out there. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, what the fuck? I'm sorry. I'm looking at. So apparently they do not have a Roku app for Red Bull TV, which I find kind of uh, surprising. They're the biggest smart TV makers in the world. But they have Oculus. Okay, apparently if you want to watch Red Bull, the Red Bulls, you can watch using Oculus. Who knew? Um, all right, so a game that actually matters, the Red Bulls will host uh, the Colorado Rapids on Tuesday, August 2nd, 7.30 p.m. That game will be on MSG or ESPN+. Plus. Colorado going into this weekend, and I'm not sure, I haven't looked at their schedule, but they are currently having a record of 6, 6, and 9, minus 4 goal difference, 24 points, which is good for number 12 in the Western Conference. Pat, uh, predictably, is going still with the reverse curse. Thankfully, he's not going crazy. He's just going with a one nothing loss against Colorado. So, Truman, what do you think is going to happen next week? All right, I'm playing all the odds. Uh, the coming off a Open Cup loss, uh, they also last home game lost. I think they're going to win this game. They're going to have enough. Hopefully, they you know I think the rest they fucking better rest all the regular players. I mean that'd be stupid if they played on Saturday. Um, and Colorado is just a, a, a shit team. They're not NYCFC, who's actually a really good team. Uh, two nothing win. I don't know what to expect at this point, honestly. Um, I think they're going to win only because I, if we lose to fucking Colorado, might as well just fold it in at this point. Um, and I know it sounds really doom and gloom, but you know what? After after this, these past three games uh, where we gave up a combined 10 goals, when our average has been like 1.1, I'm concerned. So I'm really hoping we get a shutout. But realistically, I don't see it happening. I'm going to go with a 2-1 to one victory over Colorado. I, unfortunately, I think it's going to be much tighter than anybody wants it to be. So there we are. Neat. Yeah. Uh, New York Red Bulls 2 are back to their losing ways. Uh, they lost 2 nothing to Monterey Bay, who themselves were down to 10 men, so they lost to a 10-men <laughs> side. I don't know when the red card occurred. I just saw it happen. Uh, so that puts their record at 2-3-15, and 15, 9 points, minus 31 goal difference, and still dead last in the Eastern Conference. Uh, their next match is versus New Mexico United on Sunday, July 31st at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Gotham FC did not play this past week, so there's no change um, to their... I don't know if they're still number nine in the NWSL, but the rest of their record hasn't changed. Uh, their next match is this Sunday, July 31st, 5 p.m. versus, versus the Houston Dash at home. Right. Red Bull Arena going to be busy in the next few days. Yeah. All right. With that, it's time for the dummy ground. I'm the trash man. All right. Anything you want to talk about? Uh, the only thing I got for you is that uh, we are going to be in uh, Hungary this weekend for Formula One. So there you go. 
in Hungary this weekend, uh, Max Verstappen is still in first place. And Checo Perez is in third place. So there you go. Constructors' Championship. Red Bull is still up front. Um, so I expect big things from Red Bull this weekend. Um, so I just thought this. So the Sacramento United beat um, Sporting Kansas City to advance the Open Cup final. But did you happen to see the shootout at all, Truman? Yes, of course I saw the wacky goal because you couldn't get it. They couldn't show it enough on Twitter. Well, specifically, did you hear why? Okay, so for those who didn't see it, uh, Sacramento's fourth penalty take taker scored on a Paneka, then flipped for his celebration, and then did the Steph Curry go to sleep. So did you hear why he did that? No. Because he, he actually – so the media asked him. His response – so Sporting's third penalty kick taker got blocked, but the shot was retaken because Sacramento's keeper apparently had come off the line. After he had scored the third penalty kick, uh, Sporting Kansas City's players – or did – hit that player did three flips and then – like a few fist pumps, and he thought it was too much and thought it was insulting. So when he got up there, he's like, fuck this shit. Fuck Sporting Kansas City. I'm going to score a Penanka and then celebrate in your face. All right, I'll take it. I wonder if next time they, uh, the teams play each other, there's going to be a little bit of animosity. Well, well if, if they that. play. Yeah. Right. Because there's no guarantee they're going to play anytime soon. Right. Uh, apparently, though, so I saw something about the owner of the Sacramento Kings was in attendance, and apparently a few other people that might be able to bring Sacramento into MLS were there. So maybe that's a good sign for the city because I feel like they got left out in the cold on this. But it was the stadium deals that fell through. That's why they didn't get into the MLS. They had is that a, what it was? A, yeah, they had a stadium deal that they thought was in place, and it fell apart, so they could not. They weren't going to bring him in. Weird. It's weird that they didn't have a stadium in place, and then they said no to letting them be an MLS. Strange. Very strange how that happens. Hmm. Well, they didn't have oil money or Beckham's contracts. So I mean, fair. <laughs> All right. Uh, so is that it for dumping grounds? Yes. Yep. Okay. Pat's not here. We're not doing the betting corner. Uh, so that leaves us with Truman's terrible team of the week. That's terrible. I could get mad at the Red Bulls, uh, but I'm not going to because, like I said, I watched AEW, uh, which is fantastic. So I'm going to give it up to Charlotte, who lost 4 nothing to Toronto, even though it was in Canada. Uh, you gave up four goals to a crappy team, even though you're a crappy team. So it was like a double crap fest. So really, that should have just been a scoreless draw. <laughs> Now I'm kind of curious if, if there was any other scores like that this weekend. Uh, there was not. Okay. You don't, you don't have to look. I can tell you there was not. Okay. So it's deservedly for. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, with that, let's wrap up. Uh, you can visit us at patreon.com slash ripple rant. $1 a month is all you need for exclusive content, such as monthly wrap ups, live post games, anything we decide to do. You can email us, redbullrant at gmail.com. You can call us, 973-348-5329. Facebook.com slash Red Bull Rant. On Twitter, at Red Bull Rant for the show. At Dr. Stoops for myself, at The Truman for Truman. Subscribe to the show via iTunes, Stitcher Radio, YouTube Music, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, anywhere you can find a podcast. Last words before we get out of here. I have faith for Tuesday night. Because really, who cares about Saturday? Uh, I, I really doubt I'll even be paying attention, even though I downloaded that that Red Bull TV app. Uh, it means absolutely nothing to me. Uh, but Tuesday, big rebound. I, I like their chances. Tom Barlow, uh, hat trick, because now he's red hot coming off that Austin game. Uh, let's get out there Tuesday night and fucking win. All right. So for Truman and myself, this has been episode 407 of the Red Bull Rant. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, go Red Bulls. See you later.